Hi everyone, Chris from Profit Boss here. In today's video, I want to talk to you about how much it costs to get your private pilot's license. In this video, we'll be covering my experiences with learning to fly and how much I've spent so far. Then I want to talk to you about different considerations you should take into mind before you start learning so that you can save money in the long run. I'll also be discussing how many hours on average it takes to pass your test. Then I'll be diving into a step-by-step -step breakdown of everything you need to do from start to finish and what the costs are involved for each step. At the end of the video, I'll be giving you three tips that could save you between 500 to 1,000 pounds. So make sure you watch till the end to find out what they are. So my learning to fly journey all started with a 20 minute trial flight at Netherthorpe Airfield based near Sheffield, South Yorkshire. After those 20 minutes of flying and my instructor having the confidence in me to let me land the plane, I really knew that it was something that I wanted to keep going with. I did a couple more hours at that grass airfield, but then decided that if I was going to take this to the next level and eventually become a professional pilot, I'd need to start learning to deal with an air traffic control tower. So I headed down to East Midlands Airport and got in touch with a flying club there called Don Air. In total now, I've flown 30 hours and I've passed all nine theory tests that you need to pass in order to get your PPL. All I have left to do now is another 15 hours to get to the minimum 45 hours required and pass my radio telephony practical exam and the flight practical exam, as well as completing the solo navigation exercise. So what considerations should you take on board before you start out learning to fly yourself? If you're on the larger or taller side, you may want to consider using a four-seater training plane rather than a two-seater. I tried a Cessna 152 two-seater and for me, I was just too tall to fit in it comfortably with my instructor. So I ended up going for a Piper Warrior PA28 four-seater and in the end, that meant that I was paying more for each lesson. However, being comfortable when you're learning such a big task is really important. So it's very much worth the extra spend. A top tip on what you can do to bring the cost down, block book lessons in advance, and to get an even larger discount, what you want to do is pay for the whole course upfront, and most schools are offering between five to 10% off total training costs. Another way you can bring costs down is to go for your LAPL or Light Aircraft Pilot's License. That license allows EU leisure travel only, total weight under 2000 kilograms and a single engine and no more than three passengers. For most people, that's gonna suit their requirements for just having some fun and flying around in the sky. For the LAPL, there's a reduced solo air navigation exercise of just 18 nautical miles and a landing of one other airfield instead of the regular two landings that you need to do for the full PPL license. For the LAPL also, there's a 30 hours required as a minimum. So if you're one of those that are very skilled at flying naturally, you can pass your test with just 30 hours flying experience. On average, however, it takes between 55 to 60 hours in order to get ready for your practical flying test. When I was shopping around looking at which flight school to go to, I found that schools with older planes generally charge less for an hourly rate. So if you're not bothered about being in the latest, greatest flying machine, then that's another way you can save yourself a bit of cash. So where should you start then? Going for a trial flight should be the first thing you do, and that will show you if learning to fly is something you really want to do. Don't worry if you get sick on your trial flight. I was sick for the first two hours, after that, you just become comfortable with flying. Next, you wanna take your medical exam. If you intend going professional, you'll need to take your class one medical, which costs upwards of 300 pounds. However, if you're just looking to leisurely fly around, then you can get away with taking a class two medical and they come in around 90 to 100 pounds. If you pass your medical test and all's good there, what you wanna start doing next is studying the theory exams. I've left links below in the description for the books that I bought and studied in order to prepare. By studying first, before you start taking your flying lessons, when you actually go for your lessons, you'll be a lot more prepared and have to spend less hours learning in flight. You have the option of self-studying at home, or you can go to an airfield and pay a fee to do one of their courses and learn each theory exam step by step. Once you're comfortable with the study material, you can then start your flying lessons and get going with the practical side of things. Personally, I recommend once you're about 10 hours into your flying lessons, I would start studying for the radio telephony practical exam. 
Next up after that, you'll be wanting to prepare for your first solo flight. And depending on your skills, that could be as little as 10 hours flying before you let loose into the skies by yourself. Everyone remembers their first solo flight and it really is up there with one of the best experiences in the world. You'll then be moving on to navigation training before then preparing for the practical flight test. If you're a natural flyer, you should be preparing for those things by around hour 30. So what are the costs involved with all this then? If you can fit in a two-seater, you're looking at between 150 to 180 pounds per hour. If, however, you need a four-seater, you'll be looking at between 182 to 205 pounds an hour. Most flying clubs have a yearly membership fee to join, and that comes in at around 100 pounds a year. Then you've got the nine theory tests at 25 pounds each. The seven books you need to buy for the theory tests are around 18 pounds each. The radio practical test at around 85 pounds. Then you've got the flight practical test around 200 pounds. Then you've got all the basic equipment you'll need to purchase, such as a knee board, log book, and flight computer, as well as other things. I'll leave a link in the description for a starter pack, and all that comes to around 240 pounds. As mentioned, the medical around 90 pounds. And finally, you want to purchase your own headset, coming in at around 170 pounds, and again, link down below for one I found and recommend you get as a starter. If you have the budget for a more expensive headset with active noise reduction, you can go ahead and go for that, but a basic headset will do the job just as well. As you can see from the total, it's not exactly a cheap hobby. However, what you get in experience and what you get at the end of it is very much worth it. Moving on to my three tips how you can save money in the long run. So tip number one is get in this app will allow you to have access to some of the answers for the theory test and save you having to retake the theory test. And at 25 pounds, you don't really want to be retaking those. Of course, you still want to read the books and do some proper learning, but this app just gives you that extra edge and allows you to get 100% every time. Money saving tip number two is get yourself a copy of Microsoft Flight Simulator and buy yourself a joystick to use on your computer. What that'll allow you to do is practice on the ground with the simulator while you're not able to get up in the air and keep your skills up to date. It's not great to have big gaps in between training, such as three or four weeks in between, because then you're gonna get out of touch with how the plane handles. Flight Simulator obviously isn't the real thing, it just helps with you maintaining that efficiency. I'll actually be giving away this joystick as soon as this video hits 100 likes, all you need to do to be in with a chance of winning is like this video and comment below and I'll be picking a random winner from the comments. All you need to do to be eligible is live in the UK. And then finally, tip number three is get in touch with your airfield and go down and see if you can get in any of the planes as a passenger in the back. Obviously, with coronavirus at the moment, that might not be possible, but after the pandemic's over, most people would be fine with that. That'll give you a good chance to get up in the air completely free of charge and get you more experience with what's going on, more experience with the radio comms and everything that's going on in the plane. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Comment below if you're currently learning to fly or if you've passed your test to let others know how long it took you to pass and I'll see you in the next one.